welcome back to SV Basic. Well, here we are, Brentwood Bay, British Columbia, Vancouver Island. It's been a nice place to be, but you know, last week's episode, we showed you we had a little hiccup. Our Kiwi prop failed, but we had the help of a diver to repair it, and I feel good about the repair. I've done some tests, and everything seems to be running smooth. So now it's time to direct all our attention to finishing up this deck hardware. Get this down, get our new head sail up, and start preparing to get out of here. The weather's changing. It's getting cooler at night, and we want to start heading down the coast. Looks like there's a nice weather window starting in about a week, so we want to be staged in back in the U.S. so we could take that turn and go south. So that's what we're going to do. So the next couple of days, we are just gonna bust our butts and get the rest of this project done and get off this dock and start moving again. So stay tuned while we get to work. Okay, just a piece at a time, getting these all fit in here. Everything has butyl on every layer. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, now with this cheek block in, I could run a temporary lead here to get this exact position for this clutch. I'll mark it out and put this one in next. So I know there's these clutches aren't all located right next to this winch, and that's all by design. They actually are all in a line here to get them behind a bulkhead that is right here. This is the closest I could get it without intruding into that bulkhead. It also is good that it hides this one in a locker, but everything's easily accessible from one station. You could stand right here, you could winch, and reach all the rope clutches. Okay, now that this is all starting to take shape, I've got all the rope clutches in for phase one, the first cheek blocks in here, and this is the lead for our roller furling. I need to put a couple fair leads on because this is rubbing on the deck. I want to elevate this up and I put a little tension on that so I could get a nice straight line and we'll put three fair leads in. Should control that line nicely. So that's the next step. So the deck hardware for phase one is done. It feels so good. So Teal and I are just kind of going through and just reevaluating all the hardware, what needs to be replaced. We just took off this clutch on the mast and it's broken. So we don't really have a use for it anymore because it's being rerouted over here to our new leads. So it just feels good just to just go through everything. This rigging has been an eyesore and a huge issue for us that we know that we have to tackle. But now that we have all of our attention to it, I feel really good.
All right, so phase one of the deck hardware is done. So this is just for our head sail, which means we get to put our new head sail up. Woo! Everybody is so excited about it. I know I am. We get this guest stateroom back into looking like a stateroom instead of a sail locker. Emma gets another free room to just yeah. kind of do whatever she wants. It's a good hangout room. And hey, this has made a great sail locker. That's not where it goes. Sails are supposed to go on the boat, not inside the boat. I know. This is a big day. <laughs> Ready to help me? Oh. There we go. Our brand new jib. I know. We've been waiting to get this thing on, but Teal has just... It's time. Yes, it's time. We're happy. Let's do this. Before we decided on our sales, we had to make that big decision on what sail loft we were going to use because ultimately this is going to be a long-term relationship and we wanted to make sure that we made the best choice possible. This was a project that I decided to spearhead because quite honestly Teal's plate was very full and I really wanted to delve into this. A lot has changed in the last decade on sail making. So I visited some sail lofts, I corresponded with them, talked on the phone and emails, and we ultimately decided to go with Precision Sales, and we are so happy with our decision. So why did we decide on Precision Sales? Well, there's a lot of reasons why. First for me was that first email. It was just a quote, and literally within 15 minutes of me sending a request for a quote for our head sail. We got an answer back. And after that, there was a follow-up. And we corresponded by email a few times. And then I get that email that says, I'm going to call you. So I get a phone call. I didn't think I was going to get a phone call. And it didn't feel like a sales call. It felt like talking to a friend. Ron was so good about just trying to find out what we needed, what our lifestyle is, how we plan on cruising, and just really got to know us. He didn't know if we were going to buy a full suit of sails. We were just looking for a head sail at this point. I mean, we know that we're going to get a full suit of sails, but it made me feel really good about talking to somebody who didn't make me feel like I should know better because the terminology sometimes is way over your head especially when you feel like you're under the gun when you're getting in that call and they're asking all sorts of questions but ultimately he made me feel really comfortable and not rushed to make that decision on what we needed so I for one am so grateful for them that they walked us through it and just took their time with us. So from conception to design to execution, these guys delivered. I mean, they gave us a timeline of when we were gonna get our sale and not only did they get it, they beat it by a week, which is amazing. I'm sure it doesn't happen all the time, but that was just really cool. Then we opened it up. It was just like Christmas all over again because the quality was there. We loved it. It's exactly what we wanted. And then we go up to Canada and I shot them an email saying that we were in the area. We were putting up the new head sail and they show up. They show up to see how their product looked on our boat. And it's just really nice to put a face to all the conversations and phone calls and correspondence that we've had throughout the months. So 
This is just the first of many sales that we're gonna have with these guys. It's just nice to have confidence in your sale loft. It's not sponsored, we paid for this ourselves, but it's just we feel really strongly that these are our guys. These are our sale makers and we are so happy about that. It's nice to have that confidence in who is making your sales because that's all what it's all about, right? It's just beautiful this morning. You know, it rained just buckets overnight. It's let up and it looks like we're gonna have a stretch of nice weather. So excited. The jib is up. All the hardware to run this sail is in. So we're getting close to leaving. This is what we wanted to accomplish in Brentwood Bay. Looks like weather's gonna be in our favor to head up over the top of the Sandwich Peninsula and start heading south. We're gonna go to uh, Victoria and then over to Port Angeles next. Be a good chance to shake this sail down and tune it up. There is some adjustments we could do to make it perform better. Uh, number one is replace this uh, jib track. This one is 25 years old and we have our new Garhauer that is done and is shipping to us right now. We tried to ship it into Canada but it was just too much freight. It almost was half the cost of the track itself just to ship it into Canada. So we're shipping it into the States and picking it up in Portland, Oregon. We'll put it in there. So now we'll just use the, the old gear. It seems to perform okay. It's not perfect, but we'll just keep tuning this rig as we go. Speaking of, I'm going to go through today before we leave and look at all the stays and shrouds and make sure they're all tensioned correctly and in good working order. Now that we're flying sails, that's going to be important. This will be our last full day here in uh, Brentwood Bay. We'll spend the night tonight and head out tomorrow morning. Looks like weather's going to be... Actually, it's going to be pretty nice. No rain for the next four or five days. And light winds on our beam or our back. So we'll run with it and give this sail a, a good shakedown and see how she does. Saying goodbye to our friends. It's been fun. See you guys! Woo! Bye! Bye. <laughs> so how you feel, Teal? Why do we always travel on rainy days? <laughs> it's, it's the Pacific Northwest. What do you expect? Okay. Let's get the fenders up and uh, hit it. Well, you got to keep your eyes open out here. Logs and uh, debris everywhere. Tons of spot prawn traps, crab traps, and just a uh, deadheads. Got to be on your toes, but boy, it's all worth it. The views are spectacular. Well, it's been a great time here. But as you guys can see, it's getting cold. So I'm looking forward to heading south and trying to beat this weather. I wish we did have more time here when it was warmer, much warmer. But you know, you just gotta enjoy it while you can. Did I mention how cold it is? <laughs> So we were going to go to Sydney Island and anchor right off of Sydney Spit here, but there is, I don't know, literally two, three hundred crab pots right there just on the approach. And I'm watching 
all these guys just dropping line after line. And you know what? It's early enough in the day we're going to head to the next anchorage. I mean, look at this. It's just, as far as you can see, all around us, we're just snaking through these. Okay, hard to port now. You got it. Got to stay on your toes here, don't you? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, our plans changed a bit. We were going to anchor today off of Sydney Island in a little place called Sydney Spit. It's supposed to be a picturesque little white sandy beaches. But as on the approach, we just encountered hundreds and hundreds of crab pots and commercial uh, crabbers all through there. And it was just, we were dodging and weaving and you know what, it wasn't worth it. It was early enough in the day, we decided to just keep pushing on. So we ended up coming down to Sanishton Bay. And it's a nice quiet little anchorage here. We're anchored in about 25 feet of water. It's a sandy, kind of a mixed sand mud, mud bottom. So we got a good bite. Winds are light tonight, so it's going to be nice and peaceful. It's been rainy and kind of ugly all day. The winds never really came, so we didn't do much sailing. Actually, kind of cold. Lynn's downstairs right now uh, making a nice pot roast, so it's going to be gonna be a good night we'll get up and start pushing south tomorrow it was a good little shakedown for our prop though and you know that kiwi prop it is you know it was a the part that failed was not a part that we serviced it was a part that it says clearly in the manual do not touch and so I didn't but I did lubricate uh, the fittings all around that and I'm sure that did play a part on uh, lubricating that bolt and wiggling it free but I can't complain that prop was put on this boat 13 years ago and it made it from Florida through the Panama Canal all the way up to the Pacific Northwest and 13 years later was the first problem it had so you know what? I trust it. Hopefully this is an isolated incident. Time will tell. But we did what we could to do a temporary fix. And next haul out, it's going to be a while. But if it, if it holds up, we'll be in good shape. If not, I've got extra parts for it now. You know, it kind of made me think. Maybe we need one whole extra prop rather than just having parts for it. So... I'm going to look at getting one more prop. That way we could pull the prop and keep moving and service the prop that needs servicing. But we'll check that out and maybe get one on order. I don't know. In the meantime, we're just going to relax and push south tomorrow and hopefully start getting some wind. You know, I always, when you're motoring around, you don't want wind. But now that we have our head sail up I'm just dying for a breeze of five knots or more so we can start moving oh well we'll just cozy up inside tonight maybe watch a movie and just relax well it's the next morning and it's raining a bit outside should stop within the hour and we'll pull anchor and head on to the next anchorage but I thought it'd be a good chance to talk about these diesel heaters you know we installed these almost a year ago and haven't run them. This past week is the first time we've run them. Temperatures are getting down into the 40s at night, so it's nice to wake up and have a little heat in the cabin. Uh, let's take a look at these. I have two units here. These are uh, five kilowatt units. We installed these, uh, the control units here, and the units themselves down here. We've got one unit running right now, and that's all we're running. We're running one at a time. We can run two at a time, but it's, it chews up a lot of fuel and a lot of uh, energy. So by running one on low, it raises the temperature in our cabin about 
10 to 12 degrees. So if it's 50 degrees outside, we're in the mid 60s. They run real efficient. On one of these day tanks, I could run uh, the unit for about 24 to 26 hours. It's real quiet. You could probably hear it right now, but the, with these doors closed, you don't even notice it. One thing that did concern me was any fumes or odors that came off this or any carbon monoxide. So I did put a carbon monoxide detector in here and in other staterooms that have uh, ducts coming out so we can monitor that. And so far, uh, the reading zero, so it's, it's a good thing. We do have a little bit of odor. You can smell a little diesel odor right on startup and right on shutdown, but you know, reading online over time, that should diminish and burn off a little bit, but we'll see, we haven't seen that yet. It's not unbearable, but it is, I mean, it is, you can smell it. Let me get a couple readings on this. This one unit here is on, and this is my exhaust right here. This is the one, actually look, I'm touching it right now. I put a wrap on here. You know, even though it's reading 270 degrees, it's kind of misleading because I could touch this and it's warm, but it's not hot. My concern was as it passed through the firewall here. So I could get readings on this firewall and look at that. 94 degrees is all it's raising that temperature as it goes through the firewall. So I'm happy with the installation. Everything seems to be running smooth. Emma's in here enjoying the heat right now. I could get a reading of her air temperature coming in here. 147 degrees. So it keeps it nice and toasty in the areas for that they're heating. And overall, I'm happy with them. I will be honest though, of these two units, one of them starts up every time bulletproof. The other one has had a couple hiccups. I had to reprime the system a few times. But besides that, I think we'll be happy with these. So we left the Anchorage, I don't know, two hours ago. It was a little cold, starting to warm up, the sun came out, but the wind just dropped off. We only have about I don't know, 1.7, maybe two knots of breeze, barely moving out here. But we're so anxious to set this sail, we killed the engines, flew our jib, and what's our speed right now? 1.4! 1.4 in 1.8 knots. So <laughs> we are going to just mosey along and enjoy this. What do you think, Em? I can get used to this. It is peaceful. Yeah. Look at this. Our first sail, no engines. It's a good feeling. I know. Let's just uh, let's just wander into Victoria here. You know, who cares if it takes us an hour or two? Let's just do it. How far off are we? We're about 40 degrees off the wind right now. That's not too bad. What speed are we doing? We're just bouncing right around four knots. Feels good, huh? Oh, it feels real good. Look at this. It's quiet, it's nice, the sun's out, sails are up. Imagine when we get our main sail and oh. some more sails up here. You know so we what? Have I'm choices. happy with this so far. <laughs> our, this jib is pushing us upwind right now. And we're making ground. I mean, this is nice. I mean, look at the flag and the orientation of the, of the wind. We're four, 35, 40 degrees off the wind right now. And we're still doing four knots. This is what I've been waiting for. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Onboard Lifestyle. If you would like to follow our journey, please remember to subscribe. To get notified by one of our newest videos, hit the bell. To join our Patreon family, the link is down below. Come back next week to see one of our cool action-packed videos. See you then!